Hello folks, and welcome to GED Microlearning. This is a YouTube channel specialized in the GED math test. So as you know, the GED test consists of questions of different formats, so we're going to go through a few of these in today's quiz. The first question is a slope problem where they give you a table with different uh, ordered pairs. And it says, uh, find the slope given the following, write your answer in the box below. Okay, so as you can see, they're giving you this table with um, X and Y values. And what you have to realize is that these are coordinates or ordered pairs. And step one would be to select two ordered pairs. So I've just uh, selected those two. And remember that in an order pair, the first value is an x1 value, the second value would be a y1, and then in the second order pair, it would be x2, y2. So what you do th uh, with that now is that you go ahead and plug it into your equation for a slope, which was y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus y1 x1, excuse me. Okay, so when you do that, um, this is what you get, and then the slope would be m is equal to 5. And essentially, you're going to get the same number regardless of what number you pick, okay, regardless of the ordered pairs you pick. So just to prove that to you, I'm just going to select another set of ordered pairs. I'm going to do the same thing that we did before. Okay, so I'm going to take that equation, and then I'm going to plug these numbers in. Okay, that gives me 20 divided by 4, which is equal to 5. Okay, so the slope is m is equal to 5. Question two, uh, Maria's Bakery sells muffins and cupcakes. Each muffin costs uh, 75 cents and each cupcake costs $1.25. They sold 148 items combined for a party and made a total of $120 in revenue. How many muffins did they sell? Okay, so this is a system of equations problem. So what you have to do is break it down into uh, several steps. The first step would be to set up your equation for the number of items sold and the revenue. Okay, so if we say that the muffins are going to be called X and the cupcakes are called Y, then if we add up muffins plus cupcakes, that would give us 148 because they're telling us in the question that they sold 148 items. Okay, so that's our first equation. Second equation relating to revenue, we know that the muffins are worth 75 cents and the cupcakes are worth $1.25. Okay, so we're going to use uh, this equation, right? So 0, 75 cents, which is the value of the muffins, multiplied by x, the number of muffins, plus $1.25y, okay, for the cupcakes, is equal to $120 in revenue. Okay, so that's step one. Step two, you're going to solve one equation as the function of the other. Okay, so you can either say y is equal to whatever, or x is equal to whatever. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the, this uh, equation, the easiest one, and solve, as I said, uh, for y or for x. Um, I've decided to solve for x, okay, so like this. So I, I would just isolate the x there from the left side. And then in the third step, what you're going to do is you're going to plug the equation that you just uh, solved into the uh, second equ equation from step one. Okay, so wherever you have an x, you're actually going to plug that expression in. So that would give us this. And then all you have to do is multiply that expression out. It gives you this. So we want to get uh, solve for y on the left side. So we would subtract uh, 111 from the left side. Remember that what you do on the left, you have to do on the right. And then that ends up giving us uh, 0.550 y is equal to 9. Divide both sides by 0.5, and that gives you y is equal to 18. Um, we haven't finished, though, because um, the question says, how many muffins did they sell? Okay, and we actually just found out the value for y. And if you look at the uh, our setup, muffins is x. Okay, so what you would do is now with this value that you have for y, you're going to plug it into this equation and then solve for x. Okay, like this. And then that gives you 130. Okay, so they sold... Uh, 130 muffins altogether. 
Okay, so the next question is one of these questions that has a drop down menu. So sometimes in the GED, you'll have these drop down menus where you click them, right, and it gives you the answer options. Okay, so it says uh, factor the equation uh, x squared minus 7x minus 8. And then the solutions are, um, you know, whatever, here are the answer options. Okay, so the first thing that uh, we want to remind ourselves is about factoring. Okay, so sometimes students look at quadratic equations like this and you go through like a guessing game to see which numbers would fit and it's just a pain in the neck. Okay, so I'm going to show you a way to uh, factor uh, when you have a simple quadratic equation, okay? So here, here's um, this technique. So you're going to look at your um, your constant, okay, your, your number there. In this case, it's minus 6. And you have to ask which two numbers multiplied together would give you minus 6 and added together would give you 5. Okay, so that's how you do it. So... What you do is you look at all the numbers, you factor the numbers that would give you minus 6, meaning you look at all the numbers that multiplied together would give you minus 6. Okay, so that could be 1 multiplied by minus 6, minus 1 multiplied by 6, 2 multiplied by minus 3, or minus 3 multiplied by 2. That's step 1. Step 2, as we said, is that these two numbers now have to give you 5 if you add them together. So if we look at this this set of numbers, minus 1 plus 6 gives you 5. Okay, so if you were to factor this quadratic equation, this would be the solution. Okay, so let's go back to our problem. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is, uh, again, we're going to look for uh, those numbers that multiplied together are going to give us minus 8. So 1 multiplied by minus 8, minus 1 times 8, 2 multiplied by minus 4, and minus 4 multiplied by 2. And then step 2, we said, is that these two numbers have to add up to minus 7. So if we go through our list, 1 plus minus 8 is equal to minus 7. Okay, so if you factor this equation out, that would be your solution. Okay, I don't know why I wrote it there twice, but that's the solution. Okay, so you would write 1 and minus 8. Okay, question 4 is a statistics problem. So it says, uh, Joe has been cutting classes a lot lately. Below is a summary of the past five weeks. What is the mean number of days he's been absent? Okay, so this is um, one of those terms that you have to know for statistics which is mean and what a mean value is is really an arithmetic mean or an average okay so the way that you solve this is that you add the total and then you divide by the total number of items so if we go back to the table and we add up all the days he's been absent that's 13 days in total and he's been absent uh, and this is his absence in five weeks so we would divide by five that gives us 2.6 which is answer D. Question five is a geometry problem. So it says the two shorter sides of a right triangle measure 12 feet and 27 feet. What is the measurement of the third side in feet? Okay, so here what they're asking you is um, about the Pythagorean tri uh, tr theorem. Okay, so in the, the theorem says that when you have a right angle, uh, the square of the shorter sides of the triangle, so A and B added together, is going to equal to the square uh, of the longer side, which is C. So all you have to do is they're, they're telling us the values here in the question, um, is plug these numbers into your equation like this. Okay, so 12 squared is 144 and 27 squared is 729. Add those values up. And now what you have to do is to simplify. Remember, um, in order to get rid of a square root, you uh, a square, you would take a, the square root. Okay, so you do this, and that gives you 29.55. I think it gives you 29.546 or something, but I've rounded it up. Okay, so to B. 
Okay, question six is another slope problem. Um, and in this question, you have to be able to do two things. Um, aside from solving the question, you have to be able to uh, read this graph. Okay, so it says, uh, what is the equation of a line with a slope of minus three that passes through the point below? All right, so if we break this up, the first thing that we wanna do is that we wanna find the point in the graph, okay? Or, or the coordinate or the ordered pair, if you like. So first thing is let's find our x value. So if we find the x, it's there. So the x value would be one. And then we find the y value, which is up here, which is six. Okay, so our ordered pair or our coordinate is one comma six, where one is the value for x and six is the value for y. And they're telling us in the question that the slope is minus three. Okay. Second thing we want to do is look at our answer options um, with the information that we have and try to eliminate answers that are wrong. Okay, so essentially what they're giving us is this equation. So y is equal to mx plus b. And remember that the slope would be m in that equation. So they're telling us in the question that the slope is minus three. If you look at the answer options, um, answer option um, c and d, uh, the slope is three, positive three. Okay, so you can eliminate that one and you can eliminate that one. Okay, so now we only have to find out which of these two options is correct. All right, and the way that we do that is by plugging in uh, values until you get the correct answer. Okay, so we know our order pair was one uh, for the x value and y, uh, six for the y value, and we know that the slope is minus three. So all we have to do is plug those values into this equation. So where you have a y, you're gonna put a six. Where you have an x, you're gonna put a one. And the slope, uh, as they told us, is minus three. Okay, so now you have to solve this equation, work this equation out, and you can see that it gives you six is equal to minus one, okay, which is incorrect, so answer A is wrong. Um, and then answer B, we would do the same thing like this and that gives us six is equal to six. Okay, so the correct answer here would be option B. Okay, so the next one is an algebra word problem and they're saying four adults and four children paid $56 to get into a fair. The child's ticket is, uh, a child's ticket is $8 less than an adult's ticket. What is the cost of an adult ticket? Okay, so the first thing is, um, excuse me, let's set up our variables, right? So we know that the adult ticket is gonna be X because we don't have any information. And in the child's ticket, they're telling us in the question, they're telling us that the child's ticket is $8 less than the adult, okay? So X minus eight. And that uh, with that information, we set up our equation as you can see there. So four X plus four multiplied by X minus eight is equal to 56. Okay, so the first four, that is the number of adults. So they told us that there's four adults. The X represents uh, the price of an adult ticket. And then the second four is gonna be the number of children. And then this variable, X minus eight, is the price of a, ch a child's ticket, okay? And all of that is equal to $56, which is the amount of money that they paid uh, together. All right, so all you have to do now is just multiply uh, this out, um, as you can see here, and you end up with uh, X is equal to 11, okay? So the cost of an adult ticket was $11, which is option A. Okay, the next question is an, uh, another uh, drop-down menu question, um, and in this case, they're asking you to analyze a bar graph. Okay, and this is a pretty uh, busy bar graph, but I'll just go through it uh, step by step, and uh, hopefully it'll make sense. All right, so as always, um, they're asking you um, to select uh, when York made the least amount of revenue, whether that was quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, or quarter four. So just as a quick recap, when you get a bar graph, you first wanna look at the title, then you wanna look at the Y um, axis. In this case, it's the number of members working out, and you wanna look at the X, okay? Which in this case is time. So if we look at this uh, graph, uh, this is a graph talking to us about uh, new revenue in 
a company or wherever or or place in in the country in the world um the y value is telling you the amount of that revenue okay so we're looking at 20,000 50,000 etc then the x axis is telling us when they had the revenue so in 2020 either in quarter 1 in quarter two, quarter three, or quarter four. And then we have another thing that we didn't have in the previous graph, which is that we have a legend here in the top, okay? So this is telling you what these bars represent, okay? So the blue bars represent Kent, the yellow, Lincoln, purple, Mercy, and the green one is York. And what they're asking us is when did York make the least amount of revenue, okay? So you would look exclusively at the green bars and take the bar which is shorter which is this one and you can see that is in quarter three okay so the answer is quarter three question nine is a uh, ratio proportion question so it says mel fills his gas tank with up to six uh, excuse me with six gallons of gas for twenty nine dollars fifty three cents how much would it cost to fill an 18 gallon tank. Okay, so you can do this question in two ways. I'll show you the first way setting up a proportion. So you wanna set up a proportion that looks like this, okay, where you have the cost and divided by the number of gallons, okay? So in this case, it would be $29.53 divided by six gallons, okay? That's our proportion. And that is gonna to equal to X which is um, the cost of filling up 18 gallons. Okay, so X divided by 18. Once you set up your proportion, you're gonna just multiply across like that and like this. That gives you 6X is equal to 531 um, and 54 cents. To isolate that X and that gives you $88 and 59 cents. Okay, another way that you can do it, and especially you can do it in this case because um, 18 can be divided by 6. We know the price of uh, 6 gallons of gas, so if we multiply that by 3, that would give us 18. So what you could do um, to check your work is just uh, take that price for 6 gallons, which was $29.53, and multiply it by 3. Okay, and you can see that you get the exact same answer which is option D. Okay, question 10 is one that involves uh, adding polynomials. Okay, so it says let's solve the expression below, and you can see that it's a little bit of a messy um, expression, but this is actually a very easy problem. You just have to keep on top of the signs and the exponents. Okay, so when you have uh, polynomials like this, that where you have um, a value, an x value with a different exponent, the way to solve it is to combine like terms. And what I mean by that is that you have to combine, you can only add or subtract those um, values that have the same exponent, okay? So you would look first at all the numbers that have uh, are raised to the fifth power. So in this case, 13 and four, combine those terms that gives you 17, five, excuse me, 17 X raised to the fifth power you're going to do the same for uh, values that have the exponent raised to the fourth, like that. And finally, same thing for values raised to the third. All right, so finally, your answer is option A. All right, folks, that's it from, from me. Uh, I hope you found value in this. If you did, uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, as always, thank you so much for your time and have a terrific rest of your day or evening.